This week I'm here in the heart of the Australian winter in uh, Sydney, New South Wales, and I'm visiting the Scots College, which is a historic uh, Presbyterian boys' school uh, located in a, a rather beautiful spot in Sydney, uh, overlooking the water. And I've been here today uh, working with uh, the staff and we've been discussing a theme that they've made part of their school goals for the year. They're having a whole school conversation here about uh, uh, character education, about teaching uh, for virtues, and the particular virtue that they've been focusing on uh, this past year They've been focusing on curiosity, and so they've been talking about how to spark curiosity, how to uh, help students to, uh, to, to to think more widely, to ask good questions, and so on. And they've been they've been talking about this for a while. And so I was asked to come in and address this: how to how to teach for curiosity, what what the pedagogical moves might be. And this forced me to raise some questions uh, about what we mean by curiosity. And so one of the things we've been discussing this morning is whether curiosity is a vice or a virtue. Uh, because in the Christian tradition, going back to Augustine, uh, there's a history of talking about curiosity in certain senses as a vice. Uh, Paul Griffiths has written a couple of interesting books, one called The Vice of Curiosity, the other called Intellectual Appetite, uh, talking about this Augustinian picture of how knowledge works and how Augustine had these two words for the appetite for knowledge, curiositas and studiositas, if you like curiosity and studiousness, although the Latin words don't quite map onto the way we use the words now. Now for Augustine and for this whole tradition of thinking in terms of virtues and vices, of course, uh, appetites come in two versions. There's a natural human appetite for food. We can think of that in terms of hunger. Uh, but that also in a fallen world tips over into greed and gluttony, uh, where we start trying to appropriate uh, food that's not good for us, food that doesn't belong to us, food that's too much for us. The appetite becomes excess excessive. It starts to focus on having too much for myself while other people go hungry. There's all kinds of ways in which this natural appetite for hunger can get distorted into its paired vice. Uh, the same goes for the appetite for sex, right? Desire is a natural part of being a creature, uh, but when it becomes lust, when it gets bound up with, with possession and violence and uh, reaching for that which is not mine, um, then uh, then it becomes a negative version of the same appetite. So Augustine's thinking of the appetite for knowledge in a similar kind of way. So it's natural for humans to have an appetite for knowledge. Uh, wanting to know is part of what, uh, what we're created to be. And so if Augustine's resisting the idea of curiosity, it's not because he's an ancient theologian who doesn't think people should think and uh, wants to lock everything down. It's more because he's aware of this tendency for our appetites uh, in a fallen world uh, to, to come in good and bad varieties that are hard to tease apart from each other and that take some, some soul searching and some focus on what's going on in the heart. Um, so the good appetite for knowledge, studiositas, uh, has to do with exploring God's creation, experiencing the beauty of God's creation, its wonder, um, admiring worshipping on the basis of what we come to know, but also taking what we know and putting it at the service of God and neighbour, putting it at the surface of, service of the community, wanting to know so that we can better help and serve the people around us. Whereas the twisted version of the appetite for knowledge, which Augustine calls curiositas, is the version where I, I desire to know so that I can possess that knowledge for myself, so that I can use it to build up my own importance, my own success at the expense of other people, where I use what I know to put other people down. Think of this whole genre of videos on YouTube uh, of uh, people basically engaging in debates and, and the point of watching the video is to see the person on your side crush the person who's on the other side. There's a sense of using knowledge to try to tear down, um, using knowledge to triumph in your own superiority. and then also trying to own it for yourself, trying to take something that's a gift from God and, and make it just yours, make it something that builds your kingdom, that builds your grandiosity, uh, rather than something that's used to serve God and, and neighbour and to love God and love neighbour. So if we can think of curiosity, the appetite for knowledge, in, in those two ways, then this opens up two questions for classrooms. Uh, first, there's a question of how we actually, in classrooms, manage to teach in a way that, that sparks curiosity when it's all too easy for schools to, uh, to teach in ways that mainly bring conformity and that mainly focus students on task completion, where the student gets the idea that what the teacher really wants is for you just to get to question seven on the worksheet or to get to page 37 in the book. And the focus isn't just getting the task completed rather than 
wonder or thoughtfulness, reflectiveness. So that's a first hurdle to overcome is how do we even spark a sense of curiosity in schools where schools seem to very easily tip over into enforcing conformity. But then also what kind of curiosity? How do we foster the right kind of curiosity in schools, the kind that's focused on love of God and neighbor? The kind that's focused on, will learning this lead me to more wonder? Will it lead to me, me to more appreciation of beauty and order? Will it lead me to more avenues to share what I know with other people for their benefit and for the good of my, my immediate community? So that's what we've been talking about this morning, how to design learning activities that actually connect intellectual formation and curiosity in the sense of just needing to know more things, ask good questions, explore, find out more. How do we connect that with moral formation, uh, which is this focus on uh, the needs of the neighbor and uh, the beauty of the world? Uh, so that curiosity doesn't just become something in school that I use to win points with, that I use to get better grades, that I use to get into a better college, and the focus is still on me and my success instead of connecting with people in the world around us. Uh, so uh, that's, that's what we've been focusing on here today. Big questions at the start of their, uh, the semester in their school year and beautiful surroundings here to be asking and pursuing those questions in.